You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir Lee's Path. So we are in completely uncharted territory here. We are, ooh, we are at some ex at the cusp of some exclusive Lee Path content. I cannot wait to dive into it. I do not know what I don't know what happens from this point forward. So, guys, this is new to me. This is new to you. Uh, maybe it's not. Maybe maybe it's not. Maybe you've already played through it. But anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy. Let me continue for the next 20 minutes, um, 18 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm ten, you're up, and let's go. All right. As you guys probably noticed, the sound is uh, lowered significantly because there was some copyrighted music in one of these parts. So, it's being safe, anyway. Yeah, it's totally different from the rest of the hospital. Hospital? Looking towards him, he seems confused at the idea that we're in a hospital. Just where exactly did he think we were? This is a hospital. I woke up in a waiting room earlier, and the rest of the area I was locked in, I was looked at, the rest of the area I was in looked like a hospital ward or general checkup area. According to the signs, this area is a physical rehabil rehabilitation therapy center. Yeah, I got that part. I think we're at a hospital. Place looks like a shithole. The rest of the hospital doesn't look like this. This place is decaying, but where I woke up, it looked normal. Well, as normal as this place can be. He doesn't give any verbal reply to that. Only a grunt and a nod as he tugs his leg harder. This time, this time to more success as he's able to pull himself free. When he stands at his full height again, I'm given a warm feeling. While Lee isn't as large as Oscar is, both in height or muscles, he's definitely more intimidating than the otter ever could be, but that also means I feel safer around him. Plus, he always takes care of me. It's a silly feeling, but I can't stop a burning sensation in my ears that Lee, thankfully, doesn't notice. As he shakes his leg, I can't help but wonder how he even got into that situation in the first place, and I'm not going to just let the opportunity to ask pass. How did that happen? How did what happen? Your leg through the floor. I heard this big crash and you swearing. Just fell through it. Place is falling apart. Be careful where you step, but you're light. You should be fine. Without another word or break for me to respond, he's walking past me into the room I just came from. Following him in, he can only he only gives the room a short glance over before heading towards the way I came. After a few steps, he pauses and looks back toward me before gesturing for me to follow him. Let's go your way. I think it'll be safer for you. Hmm. For us to be in a place that's more stable. We can't go that way. A grate closed behind me after I went down the hallway that led here. I can't go back. Ooh, excuse me. He gives a large sigh before sitting down on one of the less decayed benches. Its legs are rusty and the cushion is ripped, but it still looks functional and, un and, un and unlikely to break at a moment's notice. Now that we're back in here and I'm looking around it, and I'm looking around it more, I can understand how Lee has been confused about this place. And this room looks like nothing you, nothing like you would expect in a hospital. It looks like something I'd see in a school campus or gym, a large room filled with training equipment of different sizes and intensities. Does your phone work? I haven't had any luck so far. No, I tried to call Charlie earlier. I tried to call Charlie earlier, but it will turn on. That little flicker of hope in my chest that Lee would have could have been asked, could have that Lee could have something to help us escape as quickly ripped away. I don't even know why I asked. If he had one, it would. If he had one and it worked, then he would have called the cops already. What's this place used for anyway? So when you suffer an injury that damages a part of your body severely, you're kept here bedridden for a long time. It can help rebuild muscle, help with movement, or many other shit you might need. The memory of Lee's limp is prominent in my mind again, and I can't stop what comes out of my mouth next. Have you been here before? There's a beat of silence between us as he looks down towards the ground, or what I think is the ground, until I realize he's actually looking at his leg. Yeah, when I was younger. What happened? My knee got fucked up real bad and needed surgery. I couldn't walk in it for a long time. And you came here to help you walk again? Enough so it doesn't get in my way. Charlie needs me to take care of her. I can't wait for God knows how long it might take to get it fully fixed. There's a surprising amount of anger in his voice, and while I know he isn't angry at me, my ears instinctually press against my head and I look away towards the pair of yoga balls in the corner. It must have been too noticeable because I can hear him standing up and walking towards me, but it's not until he places his hand on my shoulder that I turn my head towards him again. It's a gentle touch. And that soft reminder that, that Lee won't ever hurt me on purpose. Not that I ever thought he would. He's like a well-loved teddy bear. His eyes are not focused on me, though. They're looking past me towards the balls. <laughs> towards the balls. He smiles that handsome, toothy smile again, and I can feel that tight, anxious feeling melt away in its presence. One time there was this tiger. He hurt his hip or something. I don't know. He had to use those balls to help him move around. 
but during a session he ended up falling on top of his nurse, a little gopher, scrawny little guy, looked barely out of college. Despite being double the guy's size, the tiger had, had been the one who got flustered and nearly threw his hip out again as he tried to push himself away. Is he alright? Yeah, he got out of, He got out before I finished and he looked pretty fine. Sounded pretty alright when I caught him fucking that gopher in the bathroom a couple days later. In the bathroom? As in the, within the hospital? In, a, in public? Yeah. Not exactly quiet, but no one did anything. I think it's actually pretty common there and no one says anything. That creates a thought that burns brightly in my head, so much so that it shows on my cheeks and in my ears right through my fur. It must be too prominent because Lee raises an eyebrow when he looks down at me again. What? Did you... He scoffs at that, and there's a rebellious urge to tug away from him at the condescending tone in that laugh. It's only through the knowledge that Lee would never actually mock me that keeps me in place. I think that tiger's doing well. I'm not letting him sneak away from this. Did you sleep with one of the nurses there, Lee? He gives a groan and wipes a hand down his face, momentarily pulling his features into an, exa an exaggerated, stretched expression. <laughs> oh, you naughty boy. Fine, yes, but not mine. There'd been this other guy a couple years older there, and we fooled around. Nothing major. Wait, how old were you? Fifteen or sixteen, somewhere around there. A choking sound comes out of my mouth, and Lee, much to my surprise, lets out a soft laugh in response as he rubs my back. A smile that had been across his face looks even brighter than before. I was a bit of a wild child when I was younger. Don't worry, I mellowed out. I just can't imagine you doing something like that. It sounds like... Like Oscar? Yeah. That smile falls off his face and he pulls me to the seat until we're both sitting on it, side by side with his arm now wrapped around my shoulder. The immediate thought I have is now... The immediate thought I have is how close I am to his exposed midriff, something I had completely forgotten about until this moment. Making sure I keep my eyes on his face, I don't want to look down and see any of his features up close and have to deal with any consequences that come with that. It's very unnatural, and I know he has to see he has to see something, and I know he has to see something is up, but he doesn't say anything about it, which might actually be worse because what does he because what does he think is going on in my head? But since all those th all those thoughts are only in my head, he keeps going on like nothing's happened. I was like Oscar when I was younger. That's why I'm so wary of him. My eyebrows furrow and at that, and I can't help but stand up straighter as I turn slightly towards him. Not enough to let his arm fall, but enough to bring his attention back to me. That's not very fair. I'm sure young you and Oscar were very different. You're right. Young me still had a lot of still had a little sister to take care of. Oscar's only got himself. Lee, I don't think he's a bad guy. He's not, but he's irresponsible, and that's dangerous. He shakes his head, and I can tell he's tired of this conversation, but he surprises me by continuing on. But I do think I've been a little too hard on him. He's a lot smarter than I give him credit for. Probably more than he gives himself credit for, and he's preparing for his future, too. Oh, Lord, why am I so stopped up? I know he's talking about what we learned about Oscar at lunch. It's surprising to hear he's not only in accounting, but he was offered a scholarship in law. He didn't come across as someone that serious about college. Hey, Lee, how about you just talk to Oscar about this kind of stuff? He always seems like he loves to talk to people, and he seems to like you. He gives another scoff, but this one feels more warm, and it's a beacon that I latch onto within, a, within this desolate environment. He stands up again and walks towards the parallel pair of rails, running along, running along for around ten feet. There's a pause before he runs his hands along them as he walks between them. It feels like I'm intruding on an intimate moment. Are you okay? Ooh, one second, guys. Okay, there we go. Clear my nose. He just nods. There's a silence for a while. It's not awkward, but not but not comfortable either. It's more like I'm waiting for Lee to get out of whatever memory he slipped into. After a minute of the silence, he finally speaks. Not looking away from the parallel bars, he's still running with his he's still running his claws along. When I was in therapy for my knee, I had to walk through these through these to learn to walk on it again. His voice is lower now, more gruff. It's strange to hear Lee sound like he's not—he's on the verge of showing a lot more emotion than I've ever seen from him. It's not something I've seen him visibly show. I'm not just sure if he's close to crying or smashing something in anger. How was it? His ears perk up at that, and there's a snapping sound as his tail thrashes against the floor like a whip. Hell. Did it hurt? In more ways than one. I couldn't move and it hurt to be stuck here. My sister needed me and I was stuck here, unable to walk. The question is already on my tongue, but it dies when Lee looks at me with sad eyes. They're screaming for me not to ask. I know he'll tell me eventually. Uh, he said he would. I just... don't think now's the time. Uh, not somewhere like this. Instead, we just stand there in silence once again. 
and the only sound in the room is a long, continuous scratching sound of Lee's claws against the rusty metal of the railing. Taking a seat down on the bench, I lean back and look towards the ceiling. It's just as decrepit as the rest of the room, with numerous cracks and discolorations scattered around its surface. After the scraping ends, I look down to Lee. He's looking much more composed and wiping dust off his pants without, and out of the fur of his midriff. It looks comical, and I can't help but chuckle, uh, can't help but chuckle from slipping between my lips. He looks up when he hears it, but even he's got a smile across his face. I meant what I said about liking to wear stuff like this, but it's not always the best for keeping stuff out of my fur. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I catch movement. Instinctually, my eyes dart towards the source, and I catch the top of someone wearing a yellow hard hat and bright orange vest. And just like that, he's gone, uh, walking out of sight for the window. I want to dart over towards it, but there's a splintered table in the way. Uh, the wood spiked up in a way that looks dangerous for my exposed paw pads. What's the matter? I saw someone. I think it's a construction worker or a safety person. You saw someone? Yeah, out of the window. Lee's expression only grows more confused, and he's looking at me like he's trying to figure out if I'm messing with him or not. What? I saw a sign for stairs heading down to a lower floor. I don't think we're on the ground floor. I don't think you could have seen someone out the window. Maybe at least to an underground floor, or maybe this hospital's on a slope. I know every winter hospital's on a hill, and you can enter the hospital from the outside through the middle of the hospital on the bottom. Hilly nods at that, but he doesn't look convinced. I know what I saw, and I think we should get moving now. If he's out there, then there has to be an exit nearby, right? Maybe we can find the entrance to the ER and find Lily with the others there. But Lee beats me to talking. Let's go. I don't think standing around this place is going to do us any is going to do any of us any favors. This place is ready to fall apart. This time it's me, he only replies with a nod, and he goes back towards the hallway I found him, I found him in with me quickly following. As I'm leaving, I notice something on one of the rotting tables in the corner of the room. It's a little plushy. One of a unicorn in spandex. It's Major Magica. I completely forgot about that superhero. I was a little too old when his cartoon started. Plus, he's in just as much of a bad shape as the rest of the room. It's covered in mold and a sickly green color instead of its usual flawless white makes it almost impossible to recognize. I wonder why it's there. Did someone leave it and how long ago was that? There's something eerie to it just sitting there, completely out of the place from the rest of the room. Shaking my head, I pick up my pace and follow Lee out of the entranceway and down the hallway. The image of that stuffed toy won't leave my brain, though. For some reason, it looked very sad. It's been abandoned and left alone. It became quickly apparent why Lee would have preferred to go there would have preferred to go where I came from. While the hallway leading to this department has been torn down, has been worn down, this place looked like a building that's been abandoned to the elements for years. The walls were a shade of yellow, and I had numerous cracks and had numerous cracks and holes. I would be surprised if Lee could just bust one of these down if he tried. The sign Lee pointed out is barely illegible in how, with how much it's faded. This place is so different from where I woke up. Lee only gives a grunt and continues walking onwards down the hallway, barely giving any concern towards the weak floor. Following him with more caution, I take notice of just how many fewer doors there are compared compared to the previous places I'd been in. There's only one door in this hallway, and it's a maintenance closet. When we got when we get close to it, we both stop as we hear it. It's quiet, but it's the sound of someone sobbing. Lee doesn't hesitate and tries to open the door, but it's locked. Did I just save it? Yeah, I did. He grabs the handle tight with both hands and pulls the strength that doesn't match his lithe frame. You can see the muscles on his stomach bulging as his entire body tenses. With a grunt, he pulls away, panting quiet as he shakes his hand. He flexes his fingers with a grimace. He must have had an iron grip on that door. That's not right. A door like this should just break. Looking closer, ignoring the sounds of sobbing so close to my ears, I see the problem. It's something not normal at all. The lock is brand new. What? No, seriously, look, the lock is clean and shiny and new. Lee follows my pointing finger towards the lock, and his eyes widen when he sees the polished metal of the lock. Both the parts on the door and the wall stand out, lacking any kind of rust or disrepair. I can break the door in, but I'll just hurt whoever's inside. Go away! A shrill voice catches the both of us off guard, and Lee pulls me behind him before I can protest. After a moment, it registers just how young the voice sounds. It's a little girl, probably around eight or nine. We'll get you out of there! No! Go away! Leave me alone! Don't touch me! Oh. We only want to help, I swear! Looking at Lee, a pleading expression on my face for him to do something. He's still wearing the shocked expression on his face like this truly startled him. Lee? Uh-oh. 
He shakes his head and grabs my arm, pulling me away from the door and further down the hall. I stumble on my steps, almost falling over with how forceful he's being. What are you doing? She needs our help! There's nothing we can do here. We don't have the key and I can't get in without hurting her. The best we can do is get help for her. But... I catch Lee's expression the words die on my tongue. He's wearing an expression that I've never seen on his face before and it makes my blood run cold. Distress. Despite this, he's able to keep a clear head. I can't even think beyond trying to help this person. Maybe I am as immature as he says. We don't have to go far before the sobbing disappears, but I can't get them out of my head. There's someone trapped in there, and even though they don't want our help, that doesn't mean we should abandon them. Calm down. Lee's voice is quiet, like he's talking to a child, but when I look at his face, his eyes are filled with concern only for me, and it causes my ears to burn. He tries to smile, likely to try and reassure me that there's still pain hidden, with, but there's still pain hidden within it. Whatever happened back there really messed him up. I wonder if it's his brotherly protective instincts. I can't imagine if Charlie had been locked in there. I've been doing, I've been going, I'd be going absolutely crazy. He'd be going absolutely crazy. Thinking back on that closet, it's very strange that the lock on there had been brand new. Whoever, whatever locked it didn't want us getting in there without a lot of effort. And whoever's in there didn't want us getting in either. They seemed like they were hiding, but I don't think they were hiding from us. And if they're not hiding from us, who are they hiding from? There isn't time to dwell on that, though. The concern on Lee's face as he watches is increasing, so I push it out of my mind and give him as strong of a smile as I can muster. It's shaky, but it's the best I can do. It looks like it's enough because he gives a curt nod before reluctantly letting go of me. He hesitates a moment before continuing down the hallway, looking more alert than I've ever seen someone. I give one final glance behind me, wondering what exactly is going on. There's so much going on, but it, it feels like it feels closer to an overwhelming fever dream than normal reality. But I can't find any answers, just standing, so I have to pre pass on. Press on. Press on. Apply directly to the forehead. I do notice one final thing, though, and I think Lee noticed it, too. There's no more sobbing. And the closet isn't there anymore. The corridors in this area aren't just more decrepit and rotting, but the walls here are completely devoid of any kind of poster or flyer. A stark contrast to where I woke up in. Each wall had at least one poster on it. We went from unnaturally excessive to eerily empty. It's truly like this part has been abandoned by not just its owners, but by the rest of the hospital as well. As if to prove a point, I trip on a loose board sticking up out of the ground. Lee's tail presses against my chest, but I still reach out to the wall to steady myself. It's a light impact between the wall and my palm, but it's enough to catch a crack along it and a piece of the drywall to fall from the ceiling in front of us, leaving a cloud of dust in its wake. Closing my eyes to protect them, I left surprised when Lee's paw be paws begin to run over my neck and head, parting my fur as his eyes scan over me. Be more careful. I told you, this shithole's falling apart. Uh, sorry, I was just thinking. About what? Why does this area look like it's been abandoned for years? Probably has been. We got kidnapped and taken to an abandoned hospital. But Everwinter doesn't have any abandoned hospitals. He doesn't respond to that, only continues to check for any injuries. I quell the urge to protest. I know this is just as much for his benefit as my own, but that doesn't stop it from feeling like doting. Suddenly, he stops while holding my hands. When I glance down towards them, I see a little cut running down the inside of my thumb. As he traces the cut with his open claw, it's clear, what, it's clear what's going through his, hand, through his head, and I can't stop a frown from crossing my face. You didn't do that. I must have bumped against something, probably when I fell against the wall. But like before, he doesn't respond. Instead, he runs his claw along the edges of the cut again before pulling away and walks further into the hallway. The dismal state of decay is only getting worse the further we're getting in, but neither of us says anything about it. It's clear that we both notice it. Instead, actually guys, I'm going to pause it right here. Oh man, this is getting weirder and weirder. Very Silent Hill-esque vibes. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!